Hey guys, Sib here, and today we're going to be spending 100 days on the Minecraft Earth 1-4000 to 4, scale map. This took a long time to record and even longer to edit, so maybe subscribe. But without further ado, let's hop into day one. Day one started off as any normal Minecraft Let's Play, just chopping some trees. I made some basic wooden tools and then started on a little hole thing. A little bit later, I had got some stone and I made a stone pickaxe. Yay! But then I checked F3 and realized it had taken me so long to set up that it was now day 4. Anyways, I made a furnace and an axe, and continued my quest of deforesting the Pikes Peak area. But it was getting dark, so I packed up shop and headed into my little hidey hole, which was going to be my mine pretty soon. While extending my mine and mining some coal, I found a cave, so I made some torches and started bridging my way down. First I had to kill this hostile Colorado Coco. I swear this is not how we are in real life. I mined some iron, and then I went back up to smelt that iron. While I was waiting, I decided to make my mine shaft taller. Once my iron was done smelting, I went back outside to get wood for tools, but then got interrupted by a creeper. How rude. I tried my best to patch up the hole, but I eventually ran out of dirt. While making basic iron tools, I was interrupted by the spider, which I promptly took care of. But then I decided it'd be a good idea to face a creeper and... Well, that did go so well. The morning of day five, I patched up the hole as well as I could and then went to get all of my stuff. I made a bucket and then continued deforesting Pikes Peak with a stone axe. I expanded my base a bit and then decided to smelt some clay for some reason. I continued my mine tunnel down and found yet another cave. I decided it would be a good idea to just jump in without any regard for my own safety, which worked for a bit, but then I had to fight off this horde of monsters. I somehow survived on half a heart and then went to go sit and eat some rotten flesh and heal up for a bit. Once I was at full health, I stole all the cave's iron and then continued my mine tunnel down. My perk broke, so I went up, smelted some iron, and then made a new one. While waiting for my iron smelt, I got attacked by this baby husk in full leather armor and barely survived. After waiting for a bit, I had enough iron to make full iron armor. Yay! In the morning of day 6, I turned my render distance up to max and went outside to explore a bit. After taking in the view, I did this sick water bucket clutch to get back to my base. I went out to grab some sugar cane and then went back to my base to expand it a bit. I made a small little farm with carrots, potatoes, and sugar cane. I bone me with the potatoes so I could have one to eat for breakfast. I put all of my random stuff in a chest and then set out on an expedition. I went down to Texas and then jumped across the Mexican border. On the coast of Mexico I found some melons which I quickly mined up. I jumped into a boat and decided to sail to Cuba for no reason in particular. I found and mined some cocoa beans and then I mined some jungle wood. While exploring some of the smaller islands in Cuba, night fell and I had to fight some of the hostile Cuban locals. I used the string I got from them to make some wool, which I would eventually make into a bed. I finally had enough of the Cuban locals and decided to set sail and I went to the Bahamas! Yay! As the sun rose on day 7, I took a pit stop in Cuba and then decided to sail across the Atlantic. I landed in the Sahara Desert and then proceeded to spend the next five minutes trying to figure out what country I was in. I eventually gave up and got bored, so I decided to head over to Spain. I spent a bit there and then hopped over into Portugal. I decided to place a sign saying I was here. And yes, that day is correct, it just took me forever to make this video. So maybe subscribe. I started sailing back home into the sunset, which was beautiful. On my way, I grabbed some bone blocks for bone meal. I finally made it to New York City. I've always wanted to come here. After a quick stroll down to what I think is Philadelphia, I started my journey across the Midwest. After a five minute long journey, I finally reached my home. I made a new shield because mine had broken and then put those bone blocks to good use in the farm. After smelting some of my potato profits and having a near death experience with a skeleton, I had a glorious baked potato breakfast. After my breakfast on day eight, I decided to make my floor into these dark oak planks. I think they look pretty stylish. After a bit of house expansion, I made a smoker, and then I removed the farm. I decided that I wanted to make a villager breeder, and that went well until I forgot that villagers could open doors, and both of them escaped. After 10 minutes of chasing them, I finally caught them both on the night of day 8. I decided to hunt some spiders for string so I could make that string into wool, and make that wool into a bed! Yay! I made the bed red like a true Minecraft OG. And then finally, for the first time in 8 days, I slept through the night. After a quick baked potato breakfast, I spent five minutes trying to figure out where to place a door to make it look good. After wasting too much time on day nine, I finally had a door that looked decent. I decided I wanted to bring the farm back, 
back. And after a lot of digging, I had a good looking farm which I planted some potatoes in. Oh, I also collected and planted some wheat seeds. I made a blast furnace and moved it into the new workbench wall. I bone milled enough potatoes to make my farm symmetrical. And then I went to bed. Day 10, while finishing my mine tunnel, I found another cave, which I promptly raided for iron. After reaching Y11, I was off to the strip mines. Strip mining's pretty boring, so I'll skip over most of it, but I quickly found diamonds, and I had just enough to make an enchanting table and a diamond pickaxe. Now I'll just skip to the end profits. Everything in this chest is what I got from the mining trip, including 22 diamonds! Yay! After I was done with the mining trip, I started smelting some iron, and then I bone mealed some of my potatoes. I yielded 25, which I promptly started cooking. Then I realized it was night, so I slept. In the morning of day 14, I collected my iron profits and made a skylight. Then I went outside and continued my quest of deforesting the Pikes Peak area. But then I realized if I wanted to make a dent in history, I'd have to deforest a bigger area. Like, for example, the entire country of Nicaragua? With this plan in mind, I set out on a journey. I was still in Mexico as night fell, but after a long while, I finally reached Nicaragua. I immediately began chopping down trees, and by day 15, I had quite a lot of wood. I kept chopping until I got blown up by a creeper. But don't worry, I eventually got back and got all of my stuff. I kept chopping wood until day 17, and this is what I got. Feeling successful, I grabbed all the wood and started my journey back home. Once I was home, I deposited all of my wood. Then I decided I wanted to go to the nether, so I headed off to the lava pool I found earlier. Then I proceeded to spend the next five minutes trying to figure out how to make a nether portal with only one water bucket. I eventually got it, but then on day 18 I had to go home to get a flint and steel. While I was there, I smelted up some gold to trade with piglins, and then started my way back to the portal. And after some quick fire confusion, I finally made it into the nether. I spawned in the basalt deltas, which is by far the worst nether biome, so I immediately tried to escape. And after a bit of running, I finally made it out! I did some bridging until I got to this crimson forest biome, where I started trading with some piglins. I traded for a bit until my gold despawned, because I'm an absolute idiot. While trying to find some more gold in the nether, I got attacked by this magma cube, and that didn't go so well. After a bit of a journey, I recovered almost everything I had, except my chest plate. After a lot of nether mining, I had a decent quantity of gold, so I continued trading with piglins. After even more trading and mining, I was doing pretty good, until I accidentally hit a pigman, and well, that didn't go so good. After spending 10 minutes searching, I gave up, assuming that my stuff had despawned, and decided to let myself die to hoglins. The first thing I did when I got back was make myself some new iron armor and tools. Then I made a diamond pickaxe so I could move my nether portal into my base. While I was mining the obsidian for my nether portal, I also mined four extra obsidian so I could make an enchanting table. I finally made it home on the night of day 21, and I immediately slept. The first thing I did on day 22 was make an enchanting table, but then I realized I needed a book, so I set out to get leather. I found one cow after a while, but he didn't drop leather. Then I found another cow in Wyoming, who also didn't drop leather. But finally, as it started to get dark, I found a third cow who actually dropped leather. And after making a book, I could finally make an enchanting table. After a bit of work, I had a nice little enchanting room. So I enchanted my pickaxe, and then I took down the wall between the enchanting room and the main room. After that, I just decided to push the entire room out so it would be nice and even. And after some more renovations, I finally placed my enchanting table down and enchanted my shovel. Then I moved all my chests back. I wanted to make the floor dark oak flakes, but I ran out of wood, so I had to go grab some more. But the final product looks great. The rest of the night was just spent monster hunting. The morning of day 24 was spent cow hunting so I could make a cow farm. I spent the entire day and part of the night searching, but then I died to a spider. Don't worry, I got my stuff back. After that traumatizing experience, I decided it was best to just go to bed. The first thing I did on day 25 was move my nether portal into my base. It just needed to be done. After that, I enchanted my axe and my sword. And then I finally went back into the nether. All I did was trade with piglins for 10 minutes, and then I went back. I only went back to get food, so once I had that, I went right back into the nether. I traded for a solid hour straight, but then unfortunately I died in lava. After making myself some new armor and tools, I went mob hunting to quench my anger. In the morning, I killed off the last mobs, and then I enchanted my new tools. I did nothing for a solid 5 minutes, and then I decided I wanted to make a chicken farm. Then, I spent the next three days on that. The first thing I did on day 32 was make and enchant a diamond chestplate. 
And then I enchanted the rest of my iron armor. After that, I spent the rest of the day still working on the chicken farm. Day 33, while looking for cows, I found a wolf. I decided to use the skeleton spawner I had so I could get bones to tame the wolf. I decided to build it in this cave so I wouldn't have to mine out as big of an area. And by day 34, I had a decent sized structure. And after a bit more work, I finally placed in the spawner and made it a skeleton spawner. Then I grabbed some water and made the tube where the skeletons would fall into. And finally, after breaking the torches, the skeleton spawner was done. I decided to AFK there for two days. And when I got back, this is what I was met with. I killed all the skeletons and got a ton of levels and even more bones. I promptly forgot what the bones were for and I started to work on a cooked chicken farm. I worked on the chicken farm all day and eventually I I had something for the decent. Day 38 was spent making a storage system that I totally wouldn't forget about and never revisit. Still working on the storage system day 39. The first thing I did on day 40 was work on the cooked chicken farm. Then I decided to go out exploring. But I forgot food, so I came back, went to bed, and grabbed some food. Day 41, I traveled down to San Francisco, and then I set sail for Hawaii. I landed in Oahu, and then I did some sun tanning. But then it got dark, so I decided to set sail for Russia. But I forgot the world was flat, so there was no Russia this way, it was just the edge. I decided to go mining for diamonds on the edge of the world. You can call it cheating, but I'll just laugh at you. I mined until day 42, and I yielded 10 diamonds. Then I started my long journey back home. I landed in Salinas, California, and then I finally made it home as night fell. Day 43, I made and enchanted a diamond sword. And then I died in the nether. <laughs> Don't worry, I got my stuff back. I decided I wasn't gonna go home until I got all the pearls and blaze rods necessary to go to the end. So, I started grinding. After a lot of exploring, I found a fortress and a blaze spawner. I got nine blaze rods and then I started heading home, but then I died to piglets. I found my stuff, but was missing most of my armor and some of my other stuff. But luckily, I still had my blaze rods. I grinded for ender pearls by trading with piglins and killing endermen. But finally, on day 47, I got my 12th ender pearl. And I finally made it back home on day 48. I spent the rest of day 48 prepping my stuff. And then on day 49, I headed off for the stronghold. The stronghold wasn't really a stronghold, it was just a portal in the ground. I filled in 11 of the 12 eyes, and then I decided to make a little shack. Then I went home, of course. Day 50, I made some backup gear, like enchanted iron armor and tools. Day 51, I spent a bit trying to trap a pig. Then I ran around trying to find sheep to shear for beds. I did that for the rest of the day, but I eventually gave up and went to bed. Day 52, while looking for some sheep, I found cows. I smuggled them out of Canada, and I set them up in America, where they would be infinitely bred to my benefit. The morning of day 53, while looking for sheep to shear, I found this forest fire. I couldn't let the entirety of Canada burn down, so I started putting the fire out. After a bit of work, it was finally all gone. After a long while of exploring, I finally found some sheep, which I sheared and stole. After some more illegal smuggling, I finally got them back to my base. Unfortunately, I had to kill this wild dog for trying to kill my sheep, but I felt really bad, so I made him a nice little gravestone. I spent some time on day 54 getting enough wool for beds, but finally I was ready to fight the Ender Dragon. I set off for the portal, and finally I got there as it was getting dark. I set my spawn, then I did some organizing. I was finally ready, I had all of my backup stuff, and now it was time to fill in the portal. You know, I gotta get some cool screenshots first. At last, I put in the eye and jumped in. And then I got immediately killed by an enderman. Anyways, I jumped back into the portal and tried to recover my stuff. I found out that some of it had fallen onto the island, so I killed the enderman and then tried to go get it. After a few attempts, I got the rest of my stuff, but I was missing a lot. So I did some quick organization, then I started destroying the pillars. But then I died, so I decided to grab the rest of my backup gear. After grabbing the rest of my normal stuff, I kept breaking the pillars. After a bit, I got the last pillar, and then I ran in to start damaging the dragon. But unfortunately, I placed my bed wrong, and then I died. I grabbed what was left of my stuff, but I was missing my bow, so I had to damage the dragon manually. And that didn't go so well. After a while, I had gotten the dragon pretty low, so I decided to finish it off like a true speedrunner with a bed and sword combo.
If you're wondering what I was doing there, I was putting out the fire so the experience wouldn't burn. In the end, I got 65 levels of experience and a dragon egg. I got a nice screenshot, then I jumped backwards into the portal. The first thing I did when I got back was express my excitement by giving everyone watching a seizure. And then I started my journey back home. I put my dragon egg in a chest, but then I decided that wasn't secure enough, so I started to work on getting an ender chest. And by day 57, I had one. After forgetting what I got the ender chest for, I made myself a new pickaxe and then started mining. I mined until day 59 and I got 17 diamonds among some other stuff. I made myself some diamond tools and some leggings and a helmet. I enchanted my new armor and then went to bed. Day 60, I decided I wanted to finally make a villager reader. So I spent the first part of the day trying to get the villagers into the old house I made. And by nightfall, I got one in. I spent a lot of day 61 getting the second villager in, but finally they were both safe and sound inside the villager breeder. I made a smithing table and a lectern for my villagers. I placed and broke the lectern until I eventually got a librarian that traded for fortune. Then I got a toolsmith that traded for coal. I decided to go into the mine and mine some coal for the toolsmith, and after a quick nap I gave him all my coal. I decided to break the lectern a couple more times and got the librarian to sell me fortune 3 books. I bought one, freaked out a little bit, and then put it on my pickaxe. I decided to go mining for coal again, and with the fortune 3, I easily got a ton. I gave him all of my coal and some iron, and now he'll sell me efficiency 2 iron shovels. The first thing I did on day 64 was throw a ton of eggs into my cooked chicken farm. Then I wasted all of my iron on the toolsmith, but now he'll sell me an unbreaking 3 diamond pickaxe, so I think it was worth it. Then I expanded the villager breeder, so now we have a pretty sizable complex. Day 65, I tamed a third dog and dyed him green so he would stick out from the others. Then I finished the villager breeder expansion. I gave the villagers some bread so they would start breeding, but by day 66, I still had no new children. I spent the rest of day 66 trading with the villagers, farming potatoes, and expanding my animal farm. The beginning of day 67, I decided I wanted to make a full enchanting room, and I think it turned out pretty okay. Then I AFK'd at the skeleton farm until day 68, and I got a lot of profits. I ended up with around two stacks of arrows and a stack of bones. Then I decided to organize all of my items by pushing them all to a corner with water so they would stack up and then putting them back in the chests. But then it was finally time for day 69. Nice. In honor of the occasion, I decided to pillar up 69 blocks into the air and do a MLG water bucket clutch. Nice. The only other thing I did on day 69 was mine. How sad. I mined all the way until day 71, and with my new fortune pick, I got a ton of diamonds. Day 72, I finally got my villagers to breed! And by day 73, I had twins. Then I connected my chicken farm to my egg farm to theoretically make it more efficient. But I ended up breaking it, and all of my chickens got out. I led them all into my egg farm on mistake, and they started entity cramming. But I ended up fixing it in the end, so now it kind of works. Day 74, I made one of the now grown up children into a librarian. Then I placed and rebroke his workstation until he sold me Silk Touch. The villager breeder finally produced an iron golem, which I promptly killed. Then I replaced my Silk Touch villager with a clerk for some reason. I decided to lure my toolsmith into a hole so I could zombify and cure him later. I eventually got a zombie that could wear a helmet, so I called him for the night. In the morning of day 76, I brought the zombie to this little dungeon where my villager was. But then the zombie escaped, its helmet broke, and it died in the sun. While I was waiting for the next night, I made one of my villagers into a farmer and he would sell me bread. The rest of the daytime was just spent making some profits. Finally, it was nighttime again and I found a zombie that could wear armor relatively quickly. So after trapping him, I slept. And then a creeper blew up the front of my villager breeder. I patched it up and nothing was really lost in the explosion. I got the zombie into a hole with my toolsmith, and then I heard the sweet, sweet noises of villager pain. After the villager converted into a zombie villager, I separated them with water. After googling how to cure a zombie villager for a bit, I made my weakness potions, and then I proceeded to spend the next 23 minutes trying to get an apple. Yeah, you can tell I spent a long time trying to get this. And then, in the next 60 seconds, I found two more apples. Just my luck. I went home and crafted some golden apples, made my weakness potion splash, and then finally I started the villager curing process.
one new diamond sword and a lot of waiting later, my zombie villager was cured. He was giving me a lot of crazy traits, like one iron for one emerald, six emeralds for an enchanted diamond pickaxe, one emerald for some nice enchanted iron tools, and nine coal for an emerald. I was pretty happy with the fact that one iron was now worth an enchanted iron pickaxe and nine coal was now worth a diamond. I released my toolsmith back into the villager breeder and the next morning I traded him iron until it was too much for him. Then I spent way too long trying to get the cleric into the villager dungeon, but finally he was in and infected. I immediately began curing him, and while he was curing, I expanded the villager compound. After finishing that, I went to check on the cleric, and he would now give me an emerald for two glass bottles. The reason I wanted to zombify and cure him was because now I could just go grab a ton of sand and make it into bottles and make a lot of profits. And where better to mine sand than the Sahara Desert? So on day 83, I set out for Africa but then immediately went back because I forgot to bring extra shovels. After that quick little mishap, I continued my journey to Africa. I made it at night, but then I was attacked by a sand activist. After that, I just decided to wait in some water so the mobs couldn't get to me. In the morning, I killed off all the remaining monsters and got to mine and sand. I mined a pretty sizable hole, got a lot of sand, then I went home. I got home at daybreak, mined some coal, and then immediately started smelting. It smelted the whole day, so I grabbed it and then went to sleep. The first thing I did in the morning was make all the glass into bottles. Then I traded some to the cleric who gave me 12 emeralds. He leveled up and would now trade me bottles of enchanting for just one emerald. But then my zombie somehow escaped and got killed by an iron golem. I mined coal all night for my toolsmith because he had somehow reset. But after trading with him for a bit, I noticed he was giving me very good discounts. So I think this was the same toolsmith he just somehow how became not a toolsmith and then did again. After trading with the toolsmith a bit more, I realized the farmer needed an actual farm to work. So I made one and he seemed pretty happy. Also, if you're wondering where all this cooked chicken is coming from, it's coming from my cooked chicken farm, which is working pretty nice. I spent the rest of the day expanding my villager breeder and then I went to bed. The morning of day 88, I decided to make the new expansion into a villager purification chamber. I trapped the toolsmith so I could make him trade one iron for one emerald. And then I spent a bit expanding the villager breeder even more and moving all the workbenches to the other side. I decided to make another librarian, and after only breaking and replacing the workbench three times, I got him to trade me mending books. And after only a day of work, the villager breeder was looking pretty good. I needed a zombie to be my infector, so I looked around during the night. It didn't take me long to find one that could pick up items. So I went to bed and then punched him into the purification chamber. But then the converted zombie villager started burning, so I quickly placed some blocks and put him out. Then I went to go grab some gold for golden apples so I could cure him. After making the golden apple, I splashed him and started the curing process. Then I made one of my villagers into an armor smith. After the toolsmith was done curing, not only would he sell me one iron for an emerald, but also one emerald for a diamond pickaxe. I decided to put mending on my pickaxe and also give it a good fitting name. Then while trying to infect a librarian, it got out. After getting him back in and infecting him, I traded with my armor smith who would now sell me diamond armor. Then I had a hernia because I realized my farmer would sell me apples. Also, if you if you haven't noticed, I've slowly been making my wall into emerald blocks. The librarian was finally done curing, and he would sell me fortune 3 for one emerald. So I bought two of them. After I leveled up my librarian, he would sell me glass, which means I never have to mine the Sahara Desert again. The morning of day 93, I put some more emerald blocks in my wall, and pretty much all I did the rest of the day was trade and kill golems. Most of day 94 was spent mining gold and once again trading. Day 95, I once again infected the same librarian, and after dealing with an escaped zombie, I started the curing process. While waiting for him to cure, I did some more trading, and when upgrading my farmer, he traded me golden carrots. Golden carrots are the best food source in the game, so it was nice to finally have a renewable way to get them. The librarian was finally done curing, and he would sell me a bookshelf for an emerald, and he would give me an emerald for a book. This meant that I could buy bookshelves, mine them, take the books, and sell them back to him for a profit. Satisfied with my fraudulent business ideologies, I slept well that night. I decided to infect my mending villager next, just so I could get some cheap mending books. While he was curing, I worked on my finale show, which is gonna be a fireworks show. And I didn't just do some standard fireworks, I didn't cheap out, I used diamonds. I made this really cool on a star-shaped red trail twinkle firework. And yes, I know these are firework stars, don't yell at me in the comments. After that, I realized I needed a lot more gunpowder, so I went out hunting for creepers at night. But then something pretty rare happened, the zombie siege. A zombie siege is where a ton of zombies spawn in a village and try to kill all the villagers. A zombie siege has a 10% chance of happening at midnight when a player is in a village, so yeah, it's pretty rare. By morning, I'd yielded 22 gunpowder and a music disc. After crafting fireworks and dispensing 
dispensers for a bit, I started setting up the redstone to fire them off. It was at this point I realized that firework stars create three fireworks, so I had just wasted a ton of gunpowder. After a little bit more crafting and redstoning, it was night again, so I went out on the hunt for creepers. I got 17 gunpowder and then decided to just keep crafting. After crafting for a bit, a wandering trader showed up, so I bought some magenta dye from him. After crafting some more, I made what would be the worst mistake of my Minecraft career. By killing that pillager captain, I got the bad omen effect and started a raid when I went into my village. I put all of my important stuff in a chest and then went off to fight the first wave of the raid. I only lost a couple of hearts and it was pretty easy. The second wave had nine pillagers and with the help of the iron golem, it went pretty smoothly. It took me a bit to find the last pillager, but then it was on to the third wave. The third wave had a ravager, which gave me a lot of trouble. And because of its reach, any time I could hit it, it could hit me. I eventually went back to my base and grabbed a bow, and that made the fight much easier. The fourth wave mainly just consisted of me killing things, going back to eat and heal, and then repeating. After a pretty smooth fight, it was on to the fifth wave. The fifth wave had a lot of pillagers, including the evoker, which is one of the worst pillagers out there. The evokers would send these chompy things and some little pixie fairies to torment you. At this point, I was basically just running around holding my shield and praying for my life. And all the while, the little pixie things were attacking and killing my villagers. I got scared and ran into my base because I was getting pretty low. And to my horror, I saw all of my villagers getting brutally murdered. I ran in and desperately tried to kill the rest of them, but it was too late. By the time I finished that raid, all but two of my villagers were killed. I killed the last pillager in that raid just to find another one started. In real life, I was visibly tearing up. It was terrible. All the while, my screen was being spammed with subtitles. This beast was the worst, a ravager being ridden by an evoker. And because of the witch's healing, they would never die. I kept running around in circles slowly but surely killing them all. Until finally, on one and a half hearts, I won. I was literally in tears in real life, but finally, the raid was over. There wasn't a bone in my body that wanted to celebrate, so I just hung my head. Hey, at least with Hero of the Village, my one remaining librarian would sell me mending books for one emerald. I just kind of walked around in shock for the rest of the day. But finally, it was day 100. I worked on setting up the dispenser system for the fireworks. The show was gonna be manually operated with levers and buttons because I don't have enough redstone materials to make that many repeaters for actual timings. I made and enchanted myself a new diamond helmet so I'd look like I had full diamond enchanted armor. Then I made a backup of the world so I would have a world save before I did the fireworks show. But finally, it was time. I got all of the items out of my hotbar except the music disc, and then I put on peaceful so I wouldn't get attacked by mobs. Deal with it. I got into position with a setting sun and it was finally time.
Anyways, I made a. F okay, I made. The librarian was finally done curing, so frickin' I messed that up. Sad if I. Frickin'. I decided to infect my vent. My vending villager? <laughs> yes, my vending villager. And then the rest of the day was frickin'. This isn't the rest. I need to stop saying then the rest of the day. That's like a habit. Then I decided to start working on frickin'. That probably was in there. I don't wanna. Okay. The first thing I did when I got back was do a bunch of victorious head screams.